We are live. <laughs> All right. I will be right back. Cool. Good luck. <laughs> awesome. <sighs> Late for people to get in, but yeah, I can't believe she just let us take over like this. Yeah. On her channel. We can really say anything. Let's we say really that. could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. We're nice. Yeah. Anyways, we'll see if you pop in, leave a comment so we know. Um, do you do you look at comments on the right on yeah. Streamyard? I do. Okay. Because I know there's like a lag sometimes, so I sometimes go on like YouTube on my phone and see. Oh, that's a good idea too. We have 17 people here. Awesome sauce. It's more than zero. That works for me. Yeah. Well, How's your Wednesday going so far today, Lindsay? Guys, I actually had to go into the office today. Go in. Are you usually remote? I'm usually remote um, and have been for a while. I mean, for obviously since COVID, but... Um, we are moving buildings and so I had to go in and like clean out my whole desk and everything. And it was so strange. Like, how do did work, I get stuff done? Do you work in finance? I do. I do. Like so what? I, I work for, I work for a credit union right now. Okay. Um, and I'm a project manager with them. So any like upgrades or new system implementations or products or whatnot, I manage the teams that do that. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah kind of kind of fun to tell people what to do yeah fun, fun. Off people around i know right <laughs> hi everyone we got lots of people here people amanda will be right back she's just finishing up dinner <laughs> yeah hashtag mom life oh i like emily she says she's got some hot takes on this book and i gotta tell you so do i <laughs> uh yeah gloria's got some. i have a couple i have a couple ideas well thoughts that maybe aren't popular, but yeah, that's going to be good. We, I mean, should we get started or do you think we should wait? Um, I don't know. What do you think? We can get started. Probably. We can at least talk about maybe Historthon in general. Yes. Before, how is it going? Before we get into the book. So people can talk about how their Historthon went in general. I can talk about mine and then you can talk about yours. Sounds good. So, I really used our prompts to tap, to create a TBR. And then I read them out of order because I just wasn't in the mood to read them in the order. And I managed to read four books that were on my TBR and then one that wasn't, but fit into a prompt. So five historical fiction books out of like the nine that I originally thought of. And it was a mixed bag. There was definitely a book that I really loved and a lot that were average or below average for yeah. me, which is unfortunate, but it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I read, I just counted them. I read seven books for Historathon. So I almost got to King, King and Queen status. I did make a TBR, but I diverted from it. Um, probably about halfway into it and then realized one of my books was, um, a nonfiction that I like uh, through I mean, those children, right? Thank yes. You. I'm like, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? I have no idea. It's fine. It's still historical. And it that's was, I think I was just thinking historical when I was picking them. And then when I was reading it, I'm like, oh, this isn't really fiction, but it is nonfiction November. So I'm like, you know what? It it works. Um, and then I just got historathoned out. So yeah. And I feel like I know I think Lindsay who's not here. She yeah. also said that she's kind of, I feel like mentioned in some video in yep. a comment that she kind of got burnt out too. So I'm sure maybe a lot of, it was a lot to read like nine back to back historical fiction. Yes. If people even try to attempt that. Yes. I think but. the fact that I did seven, I'm pretty happy with. And I tried to make them all books that have been sitting on my shelves for a really long time. Yeah. So Marcy read 44 books this month and finished all nine historical fiction prompts. Wow. Awesome. That's, that's fantastic. Cool. Love it. And a lot of you guys did really good. I know. I'm Thanks wondering. for participating. 
Yeah, it was fun. I liked the, it was just different than other readathons I've seen. So I'm glad that we did it to challenge ourselves. Yeah, I really, and it really, really did challenge me to completely go outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. Within my comfort zone, because historical fiction is kind of my jam, but yeah, totally. Um, Amanda says she's going to be a little longer. So, oh, there she is. Never mind. I'm back. Surprise. What happened to 10 minutes? Surprise. My 10 minutes was shorter than 10 minutes. I'm hoping I can trust my kids to take something out of the oven. You can. <laughs> well, so we were catching we'll up on historathon. We'll so, see what happens. Yeah. Um, how'd you, yeah. How'd you go? <laughs> not, not great. Not great at all. My printer just started making noises. Hmm. Um, no, mine... I don't know what's going on with my printer. Um, I hit a massive reading slump. And so I think I read two books. Um, All good. Yeah. Uh, three technically, but one's a net galley book that doesn't come out until next year. So, <laughs> but I got, and I got halfway through one. So. But you read our group read. read. You did. <laughs> I did. I read the group read. I read this and I read my in real life book club book for the month. And so I calling that a win. That's a total win. I, I got the large print from the library. Ooh. So very different. Ooh. Cover. Shocker. Ooh. A girl, a woman with her back to the cover. Yep. Right. Too many skirt though. And there's no planes. <laughs> Good point. Good I mean, point. Slightly different approach. I feel like that's at least true to the book. She had a mini skirt. True. That is true. That is. And a leather jacket. So or a suede jacket. Suede jacket. But yeah. Do we have I any other? I read this. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, go go for it. Did you guys say what you read? Or just how much? You read? No, but I could mention. Let's mention go it. it. Yeah, go for so it. I read uh, where is it? Let me just grab them here for one second. I should have prepared. I read, first one I read was Joan. Ooh. And I how, was, how was that? I didn't love it. This came out this you year did. and it's about Joan of Arc. I gave it two stars. I actually think people who love Hamlet or Hamnet, whatever, they might love this. Um, it was very lyrical and like fluffy and you know, but I think it was interesting. It has a very strong female uh, protagonist and it's about this girl who was severely abused and treated horribly and how she like stood up. And it's actually also very like political with France in the 1400s. So I was a little bit like bored. Um, so I think this has a place, like people could love it, but I didn't. Yeah, you, so there's a couple of ladies it's called Step Into the Story. And they have a YouTube channel and they did a group discussion on Joan. I don't know if that oh, gets bored one day. Maybe. Yeah. Just, I want to read that. Yeah. Um, and then I read The Exiles and this was a success, a success. One of the best books that I read this month. I really loved it. It was good. Um, it wasn't perfect, but it was really good. About women who were on a transport ship from um, England sent to Australia and were like prisoners and had to survive. Um, yeah. And then I read our book. And then I did a reread. I read Number of the Stars by Lewis Lowry. So, oh, yeah. Did you love it? I did. Yeah, it was really good to jump back into that. It was fun to. It's such a good, good like, point for kids for historical fiction. It was one of the first historical fiction books I ever remember reading. Oh, me too. Me great. too. So I think this is, like, foundational for me. I have The Exiles on my shelf, too. Yeah. I don't have that one. All right, Lindsay, what did you read? Oh, they're all upstairs, so I don't have them to... No, that's okay. Just um, Let's see. I read Lost Girls. Then I read um, The House Girl by Tara Conklin, and I really enjoyed that one. Um, set pre-Civil War about a slave who was a house girl and kind of like her relationship with the master and then her attempt to escape. Um, I read Out of Hiding... And Irina's Children. I, Out of Hiding is more of a memoir, middle grade memoir, and Irina's Children is nonfiction, which I totally 
broke the rules, but whatever. Um, Out of Hiding follows the story of Ruth as she immigrates to the United States post-World War II. Um, and it follows, it it has a tie to Ellen Gratz's Prisoner B3087. It's like she, Ruth is who married that character. Mm-hmm. And then Irina's Children, which was fine. It, I have the Young Readers Edition. And so it was very, it went into like explaining what the Holocaust was and what concentration camps were and what the ghetto was. And it's like, I kind of skipped those parts because mm-hmm. I know. Um, I quit on the Confessions of Franny Langton. It was just too weird. Um, loved Sold on a Monday. Uh, like, loved. It went places I didn't expect it to. And then The Hotel in the Corner of Bitter and Sweet. Why did I wait so long to read that book? That was awesome. Those two I, I own, so I'm excited to to read yeah. Sold on a Monday now. And yeah. Hotel Corner Bitter and Sweet. Yeah, I have sold on a Monday too, and now I want to read it. So good. And now I'm I'm in the midst of a thriller because that's what I need. So, so I read this. I read um, Bridge of Scarlet Leaves, which mm-hmm. is another um, scene that she wrote sold on Monday. Yeah. Um, and it was okay. It wasn't as good as I was hoping. It was. It it was almost like one of those books where an author tries to cram every aspect of something into the book and it was just too much. Like I just, it, it just felt too gimmicky almost for me for what it was. And it's about Japanese internment camps. So it's like, it didn't need all the stuff. It needed more depth and less plot devices. Um, And then I read a, a uh, middle grade book that comes out next year called The Lost Year by Catherine Marsh. And it's about the Ukrainian famine um, oh, cool. set in the 1930s. And it was very, very, very good. So I, I really, really that one. Yeah. So that one is um, Dual Timeline. It's set in 2020 and in 1930. And it follows three cousins. So there's one cousin's in Brooklyn, New York in 1930. One cousin is in Kiev, Ukraine in 1930. And then one cousin is a 13-year-old boy's great-grandmother in 2020. And so she is telling him the story of the three cousins. And he's living in New Jersey or something like that. So it it's very like on-the-nose COVID stuff because it talks about quarantine and being at home and his, his dad is over a uh, foreign correspondent overseas both of his parents are in journalism and you know they pulled his grandma out of our great grandma out of a nursing home to try to protect her and taking being a caregiver and you know so there's like a lot of stuff that kids today are going to relate to because they lived through it as an adult when i first started reading it i was a little it's too on the nose you know but as I got further into the book, I could appreciate the tie-ins to sure. how um, the author was relating it. And it ended up being really, really good. And it comes out, hold on, I will tell you. I think it's in January. What's the name of it uh, again? It's called The Lost Year. Where does it say? I'm, I'm curious if there's going to be like a yeah, January a surge of historical fiction books that have to do with Ukraine because of the current yeah. situation. I feel like that's already well, kind of... The funny trend. thing is, I was invited um, to be part of like an author event through the publisher for Catherine Marsh, and she wrote this before the war started in Ukraine. Oh, and wow. so, because... But it ended up not getting published until after, because of the way mm-hmm. publishing works. She wrote the whole thing during Uh COVID, like, so before Ukraine started, it just was very fortunate for her, I feel like, that things happened the way they did. For her. For her, um, yeah. Oops, sorry. For her, not for anybody else. Yeah. For her um, book sales, let's say that, specifically for her book sales, because she has family in Ukraine, so I don't think she is, like, celebrating this in any way, shape, or form, but... 
Yeah. Wow. Okay, so should we talk about the book? Yeah. yeah. Let's get into it. About. Do we want to rate like what we each thought and then see what other people think and then get into spoilers maybe and stuff? Or I don't know. Oh, cool. Yeah. I like the so, so go ahead and tell us what you thought of it in the comments. Um, tell us some of your pros and cons and we will kind of do the same and we'll talk. Let's talk pros first and then we can talk cons. Does that, does that work for everybody? Do you have any pros, Gloria? Maybe one. Any pros. <laughs> it's a book. Okay. Give us your pro. One pro. Okay. Um, I thought I, I'm going to have probably a lot to say in the cons, but I did feel like I learned this was a unique perspective for me. I guess it, I haven't really read about this. And so I'm glad that I like learned about a real institution that existed in New York and like how people were treated. Like it's surprising and not surprising at the same time, like surprising that it was the 1970s, you know, like that's not that long ago and it was happening, but also not surprising because it's like, of course this happened. Yes. People did terrible things to right. um, people who were taken, it can be easily taken advantage of, which is very sad. Um, and I feel like, yeah, it was fairly like fast paced. So maybe that was like another pro for me, but I'll have a lot more to say in the cons. Overall, I rated this book two stars for me. Oy. That's fine. Out. Yikes. <laughs> what about you, Lindsay? I gave it four stars. Um, I really enjoyed, I love the fast pace of it. I, I love books based on true historical events. So as I'm reading it, I'm like Googling stuff. I'm watching her all those little thing on YouTube. Like, I don't know. I think it got me even more immersed in it. Um, certain things I did not expect nor predict. Um, I found myself like coming up with all these theories and then I'm like, oh my God, now I sound like I'm like insane. Like I'm crazy or I'm like grasping at straws and I'm like, wait a second, am I supposed to feel this way? Am I supposed to be all like what's happening here? Um, but yeah, those, I just, I was totally in for it. I would say my biggest pro of this book is that it creeped me out. Like it creeped me out, which is not easy to do, but I think I found my like creepy knit niche and that's asylums and like, no, like, no. <laughs> it like it it just it really like just wigged me out um and i'm putting that in the pro because that's hard to do for me and so for me that that was a sign of like good writing um to a point i'm not saying all of it there was definitely a lot of suspension of disbelief or suspension of whatever belief mm -hmm. um that had to be take had to take place but I also enjoyed the inform or enjoyed, I'm not going to say enjoyed, I appreciated the information because I had no knowledge of this at all. It did not surprise me in the least that this happened, especially at the time that it did, because especially um, in that time in history, uh, people that were disabled, that had mental um, deficiencies, those sorts of things were very easily taken advantage of of and they were mistreated and so it wasn't surprising to me but I did um, appreciate the information and I appreciated the perspective and kind of the inside like of somebody being in the asylum um, and so yeah so that for me was the biggest pro though was just the creepy factor all right Gloria I'm loving people's hot takes now is your time yeah. Emily is, is bringing up a lot of good points I did not like the main character at all. Um, I didn't like that she was like in high school. Like it was like, okay, weird. Um, I thought it was very repetitive. Like just her, it was a whole book was just like asking questions. Like I don't love when books are like lyrical and flowy, but it wasn't good writing to me. It felt very like, just like, I don't know, basic kind of. And I also- Have you ever read Eleanor Weissman? I had not, no. And I also- Have you ever read Elementary Weissman? Oh, okay. No, yeah. 
And I had also, I didn't like the investigation. Like it all felt too unbelievable for me. And then also the fact that like Eddie was the bad guy, I guess, as soon as we met him, like I was like, okay, it's either this guy or that guy. I was like, so for me, it wasn't like a big reveal. I was like, well, no, duh. Who else would it be? <laughs> um, so I kind of felt just, I just felt like annoyed and kind of cringy the whole time apart from like it exploring like the horrific circumstances of this institution, like the, the main character to me was not someone I felt like I wanted to root for. And it all just, she just kind of annoyed me with the decisions she was making and the questions she was asking people. I was like, girl, just like think about what you're doing and like be smart. I don't know. It was just felt a little for me, not my favorite. And People are bringing up other really good points in the comments that I didn't even think about, but now thinking about, I'm like, that makes sense. Go ahead and share some of the ones you're seeing that stand out. Um, I really like Emily Reed's people who like her cons or people who are actually abused don't actually have a voice in the book, which is interesting. If it's a book about like this mental, mental institution, the only voice of someone who is actually in the institution is a serial killer, which is like, okay um but that was so that legend is actually based on a real employee that worked at willow is a real white thing yeah no, okay whatever yeah um i did feel like it was like i i can understand that the conditions in willow Grove, willowbrook were probably horrible but it was just like so extreme and i also listened to the audiobook and i felt like she used the word I'm not going to say it, but S-H-I-T, like a thousand times. And I'm just like, I I get it. Like, I get it. There's poop everywhere. <laughs> like, can you move on <laughs> and like describe something else? So I just felt like a little bit like just too much of description of that and then not enough like exploration and depth of what it I guess it could have been. So I don't know if those thoughts are succinct for me, but Yeah. I think this is definitely an example of it depends on your background and it depends on your life perspective mm -hmm. going into the book as to how you're going to come out of the book. Because for a lot of people, we go into it and we're like, oh, I appreciate the education, you know, that we got from or the information. And for other people who have a lot of education in this area, you, sorry. Oh, so. <laughs> but for people who have a lot of experience in this area or who have a lot of knowledge in this area, um, they're coming out of it going, this was not a good representation, you know, of what happened. And I can appreciate that for sure, because there have definitely been books that I felt that way of rating was really low because I'm like, no, this was not accurate. And I think that's something that's really hard for historical fiction writers is so much rides on the accuracy of what you're writing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Anyway, what about you, Lindsay? Do you have cons that you want to share? Yeah. Um, some of the things at the end just got wrapped up way too easy and way too quickly. And like, who would leave her alone in an office? I just could not buy that. I couldn't buy that they found her real. These are spoilers. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I just couldn't buy that, that they oh, found yeah. her real. That's really, so fast. Guys. Yeah. I, I, couldn't, I could not. I, I just kind of rolled my eyes at those points. And at that point, I'm like, you know what? We're just going to go with it because I'm going to finish the book and blah, blah, blah. But it was just those. And how, how did nobody realize she was MIA? Like, I just didn't, I don't know. My biggest, one of my biggest things, like, it goes back to the very beginning of the book. And they find her and they're like, oh, you're her. Yeah. We're taking you in. I'm like, like, they in there were basically emaciated and looked like they had been starved and all this. And she's a perfectly healthy person. And her sister had been there for years. Yeah. Like. 
her hair's not all matted. Her it's hair, you like, clothes. she's yeah. perfectly taken care of, but yet they're gonna mistake her for she doesn't have bruises all over her. You know, like I'm sitting there going, uh huh. Especially like, after that for me was yeah. Especially after watching the Geraldo thing and then like doing my little deep dive, I'm like, she would have stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah. yeah. For real. But her trying to keep, continually say like, no, I'm the sister. And I'm like, maybe, maybe at one point I'm like, maybe they're not twins and maybe they are like, the, they're only one person. It really is. I was, that's what I was thinking. I was like, maybe it really is the sister and yeah. she does have, you know, multiple personality disorder or something like. Yeah, I did. I was, I thought that for a second, I was like, well, this would be kind of fun if it was like actually that was what happened and i maybe would have preferred it if that was what happened well and i hate when i come up with things like that in my head and it ends up not being that and i'm like it would have been a better book if it had been my way right <laughs> like i've done that with other books before where i'm like it could be this 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 or this and it would have been a better book you know mm -hmm. like and it wouldn't be that hard to do but you know yeah i don't know but the for me the creepiness came in with the lips yeah smiles i was like that for me i was like oh <laughs> it wasn't even like the slit throat or the wrists or anything like that it was the lipstick smiles and i'm just like picturing the joker and i'm like oh my goodness mm -hmm. it was super freaky but yeah i had figured out who it was and like all of that but i didn't realize kind of all of the like that he was a patient and yeah. you know all this I, yeah. I knew who was doing it, but i couldn't figure out why like well, what and i knew was. i knew it was not wayne because she was really trying to like dangle that carrot out in front of us for oh, us i'm like um, really? was she? i didn't <sighs> notice well yeah whatever <laughs> like Ellen Marie, you know better. Like, that's just too easy. And then I thought it was the doctor because I'm like, well, yeah. I did not think it was him, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a nice Looks, like it's, a, looks like it's a mixed bag, though. Some people definitely loved it, and I think less people didn't, but I do have some on my side <laughs> that didn't love it. Um, I definitely don't think this was her strongest book. It was her creepiest no. book, but it was not her strongest book. And her other ones tend to have dual timelines, and I missed, I missed having another perspective or another storyline. See, I don't prefer the dual timeline, so that for me was not missed. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I like be. what Emily says. This is a story that didn't know what it wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah. Story about honey and a serial killer. Yeah, I, I don't think she needed to bring in the Cropsy. But do you stuff. feel like she had to because that Cropsy is, a, is tied to Willowbrook? Yeah. I don't know. I don't feel like Cropsy needed to be one of the patients. That makes sense. I feel well, like she so could have, she could have, it could have been like her stepdad or something, you know, like it could have been something wild. Cause I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I'm I reading do, through the. I do like the idea of a historical more like thriller, mm -hmm. I guess. And yeah. so, although I didn't love this one, I am curious to read more. So I'm wondering if anyone in the comments has recommendations. Oh, yeah. That's a really good, and because I did too. I didn't realize it was gonna be like thrillery, murder, mystery. I mean, I don't know if I say murder mystery because it was more serial killer. Mm -hmm. um, but I really enjoyed that. But I also like the informational, like historical stuff as mm -hmm. well. So Wait, speaking of, we both just read and enjoyed this book, which is exactly 
it was like a historical oh I, that was so good suspense thriller and there's a serial killer but this was so well done not anywhere close to this and there's some really creepy stuff happening in this book too but i loved this one and want more recommendations like it yes that one was so good um there's a nonfiction about the fbi agent in that book gloria um because that was like a real like it was like the american jack the ripper is what they called him oh yeah it, it was a real thing okay and so there's a I, I gotta i gotta find it i don't remember what the name of it is is but yeah the fbi agent that michael works for in the unknown beloved he's a real person and there's a nonfiction book about him trying to catch that the guy in the book cool okay huh. look at that. which i know how you like to pair nonfiction and fiction so what book was that again dj this is the unknown beloved by amy Harmon. so this is a book set in cleveland in the 19 20s and 30s about a serial killer on the loose and an FBI agent and a woman pair up to try to solve the crime and it was so good so good yeah <laughs> it was it was really well written yeah have you read that one Lindsay I have not the only one I can think of is like devil in the white city which I only liked half that book and that's nonfiction, right I've heard mixed things about that one. Yeah, I, think I like when they talked about the serial killer, but the rest of it I did not. Not so much the World's Fair stuff. And then I was just looking up like historical fiction thriller books, and then the Confessions of Franny Langdon comes up, and I'm like, oh gosh, no, I can't get away from that book. <laughs> um, Elizabeth. Elliot Ness. Yes, that's who I was thinking of. Thank you, Becky. Elliot Ness is a real like guy. Okay. Um, Elizabeth in the comments said this is the second book that she read by Ellen Marie Wiseman, and she doesn't know if she'll be the author for me. Oh. And now I'm I'm nervous to read another book from her. So if you've read another one of hers that you loved, which one would it be for me to try? Um, I go ahead. I was gonna say the life she was given. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. That's the circus one. Oh well, yeah, it's a circus one. It's about a girl whose mom sells her to the circus. Oh geez. That's and um yeah. Okay, you gotta go upstairs. <laughs> go. He's trying. He's trying so hard. Um oh, oh does it for any LinkedIn. Um, Desi, Desi's comment about all I could think of is kids being punished for their symptoms. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. these guys, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, I know I was trying to think if I knew of any other like historical thrillers like this that have that murder aspect, but that aren't like, I don't know, that aren't cheesy. Yeah, not like, not like cozy historical mysteries because I feel like there's a lot of right. those. Sure. But like m historical thrillers. Okay. I think there's maybe thrillers that are like based in real stuff. Ooh, mm -hmm. um, the Huntress. I feel like was a little thrillerish. Ooh, that's a Kate Quinn book. Yes. yes. I do need to try that one. That would be good. I feel like um, I Must Betray You had a little bit of a thriller aspect to it. Yeah, I would agree. It was like suspenseful. It's and not murdery, but it's more suspense. Suspenseful. Like, yeah. yeah. And then, so then I think of like the Alice Network, it's a little suspenseful. Is that the one I'm thinking of? So Kate Quinn maybe might be a. I know. Oh, <laughs> crochet Mima. She she said she was bothered by the typos. Where was the editor? I listened to the audiobook, so that didn't. No, there was a lot. Make. That drives me nuts. That is one of my biggest pet peeves in books. Like, you were literally paid to do this. <laughs> Come on. 
I found a typo in like the 20th edition of a book. And I was like, you guys have had 20 years to fix this. <laughs> Why is this in here? <laughs> Why? Oh my goodness. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Okay. So we kind of went over like if anybody had history of knowing more about Willowbrook. Um, so if you had been in Rosemary shoes, not Rosemary, Sage, Sage. Yep. If you had been in Sage's shoes, would you have gone looking for your sister at the asylum by yourself? No. <laughs> I feel no. like that is, isn't that like horror movie number one is like, you don't go do things by yourself. You go with your friends, you go with an adult, like you don't just, you don't just go do stuff on your own. But who would she take with her? Any of her friends, even if she's having a fight about it? Or a cop? I think her, like, reason for having a fight was very shallow. Yeah. Yeah. Again, another thing why I was like, this They brought up Popsy, so nope, they're cut off. But she's also 16. Like, I don't know. I guess I didn't, I didn't get the her being 16 either. Like, I felt like a lot of her thought processes were not 16 year old thought processes. They were more like 22 year old thought processes. Because like heck, if she's just gonna sit there and be like, I'm just gonna sit here and calm down so they'll stop strapping me down. Like, no, if you're 16 and somebody has taken you in there, you're raising all sorts of heck to get out. Like, you're not calming down. Could you imagine your daughter, Lindsay? Like, just, well, no, I'm just going to hang out here and see what happens. Well, the one is pretty scared of anybody in an authoritative position, so I could see her totally. <laughs> but the other one, heck no. Yeah. Like, in the in the conditions that, that, would, that they were in, and then thinking that she's not who she says she is, like, no way are my kids just, like, going to hang out. I felt like that was, yeah, the more I'm talking about this book, the lower my ratings getting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kim, she was very impulsive. She was very, very impulsive. Do you guys think there's anything else she, that, this is one of the questions in the back of the book. Is there anything else she could have tried <laughs> to convince them that she was not Rosemary. I've been like, look at how not skinny I am. Also, I don't, I guess I haven't interacted with that many identical twins, but like, I know that there is stuff that sets identical twins apart. There's like birthmarks that are different. There's stuff that's different. They're not like so yeah, identical. Nobody would, she's like, well, if I show them I don't have a scar from the surgery, then they'll believe me. But then no, like everybody was like, not my problem. You're in here. You're in here. And that's, like, that's where I'm like, the like employee perspective and like how they just like, you're, you're trying to be rational with someone who does not think you're rational at all. So like, there's already a bias against her that she's making all of this up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Have you guys read many other books that have to do with mental health? Like the ones that come to the top of mind for me are, I did read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I read two nonfictions, Brain on Fire and uh, Inferno, which was about like women who are experiencing like psychosis and their experience. Um, and then I read The Woman They Could Not Silence, which is another nonfiction about a woman who... Um, was like wrongfully imprisoned because her husband just wanted to get rid of her. So locked her up. And I feel like, although I didn't love this book, I think it was like, I, I like to like categorize the books I've read. And this one like fits well into the ones I have read about, like, even though I didn't love it, it still shined light on again, Willowbrook and like what existed and what and how many were treated. So it was still interesting to like, get that background and just learn something new um from that so 
I guess I'm like, I'm happy to add it to my list of mental health kind of books that I have read. Um, although the nonfictions were also pretty wild. Um, less about like conditions and more about like someone experiencing actual like mental breakdown, which was kind of interesting to read. Um, I read Ellen Marie Wiseman. She wrote another book called What She Left Behind was about, um, was it a daughter or a wife? I feel like it was the main character. Her dad did not like who she wanted to marry. So he had her committed to an asylum. And so then she was, it's from her perspective of being there. Lindsay, talk about necessary lies. I'll be right back. I got to go help my kids with something. Because that was going to be my, because they have epilepsy. Yes. In necessary lies. And they, it deals with mental, uh, retardation yeah. as well. And then I see in the comment, the last house on needless street also has a mental health aspect to it. That's pretty prominent in the book. Um, that also puts you in an interesting, gives you an interesting perspective. Um, and necessary lies. Gosh, I can't, I'm trying to think of what I'm confusing that one with another one. I'm going to make a list and put it in the comment of other mental health books. And then if anyone has any to add to the list. Um, are you saying necessary lies? Necessary lies. And the other one was the girl she left behind? The what she left behind. Ooh, I have the home for unwanted girls. Yes, the home for unwanted. I forgot about that one too. Oh, I that one that too. Was really good. But I thought this was really good. So take it with a grain of salt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay is very um I generous. Very generous. With her stars. Gloria is very stingy with her stars. This is Ooh, true. I, just, I really want to read. Take my hand. Oh, Emily, thank you for the correction. I appreciate that. I was not aware of that. So, when rabbits howl, mm -hmm. ooh, that sounds interesting. I'm going to have to add that to my... So, um, anyway, the other book we yeah. read, um, uh, Amanda, we both bought it in the, um, airport in North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Um, the secret, the hidden child, hidden child about eugenics, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's about eugenics and epilepsy as well. I totally Ten forgot days. necessary lies had ups, dealt with ups, ups, epilepsy. Epilepsy? Epilepsy. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's the one that I thought of the most because it's basically about them being mistreated right around the same time frame as well. Yep. So, yeah. Oh, so many good ones. I know. I'm like, I'm loving all of this. Oh. I love I love getting all the book recommendations. It's my favorite part of every live. Same. It's oh, Desi brought up a good comment that um, eagle driven doctors still happen, but even someone who's not neurodiverse, um, regular doctors sometimes dismiss health issues. Like, it's so true. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, one of the questions in the book is, um, it was like talking about whatever the 
cropsy thing and it's like are you aware of any urban legends in your area or like any stuff about where you live and i'm like i don't think so i mean i feel like bigfoot is like in pacific northwest oh, yeah so i don't know anything about that yeah uh wisconsin we have a uh, slender man which unfortunately led to a not so great event happening with some kids around here that's sad yeah oh and i was actually going to bring this up a friend of mine works at the our local county um like mental hospital here and she so i was telling her about this book and she's like yeah like no one she's like i don't even want to touch it because she kind of feel, would feel the same way as emily's feeling like she's like i just know it's not going to be it's not going to depict things in the right way. Like an interesting thing that she. I had one as well. The children on the hill. I'm like looking all these books up. I know. Any urban legends by you guys? By you, Amanda? I don't know. I haven't. I don't know. I don't pay attention to anything like that. I haven't lived here long enough. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, any other thoughts yeah. on the book? Yeah, any or thoughts on any of your historic on reading? I I failed big time this year. Cool. I just hit a big slump. Although, in all surprised. fairness, I did get over halfway through eleven twenty two sixty three which is like a massive book. So I feel like that counts. And I'm happy. Are you enjoying it? Not really. That's like the only Stephen King that I would ever consider reading. I know. I'm Same. not a horror girly at all. And so I'm like, I would read an he alternate history. Finally is starting to pick up pace a little bit, but it has been a lot of slogging to get to where we're at. And I feel like these last, like this last section is going to be good, but it was a lot to get here. And, but I finished that and then I uh, read half of They Went Left. Have you read that before, Gloria? Of They Went Not Left. Like no, I read Girl in Blue Coat or whatever, and mm -hmm. I didn't love it. It was a little too YA for me and like also okay. too convenient. So I haven't read They Went Left, but that one I'm still, it's like, Okay, Amazing. I'll let you know how I how I end up feeling about it. But so far, it is really, really, really good. Is it about the Berlin Wall, right? No, it's no. about post-World War II. A Jewish girl who's like 22 is trying to find her younger brother who got, they got split up at a concentration camp because they split by gender. And so they got split up and she... They lost touch with each other and so she's trying to find her brother who's like 12. and she everybody's displaced there's no like central location where they can go she's dealing with a lot of mental health issues um just of everything that she's been through and it's just like shines a huge light on what it was like to go through the concentration camps and through all the horror and the torture and the torment and then just like be let out and trying to find family and also deal with your own like mental struggles and flashbacks and things like that and it's really phenomenal that's an interesting perspective because i feel like a lot of books are either like in the center of the concentration camp or like way after so they skip like the mm -hmm. in between like turmoil of what life was like immediately after so that's really interesting i hope yeah it's been for you. Yeah. No. And I'm loving the way it's written. It's just like, it's very, cause it's in her head. And so it's very like choppy and I'm appreciating it. I think it's fantastic so far, but, but yeah, so I read half of those two and then three books. So one was a middle grade. So not great. Sunray Alice by Jeremy Hubler. What did we, any thoughts on um, the format that we did Historathon, the little challenge of like- Oh yeah, do you guys like that or do you like the bingo board better? Oh yeah. 
I feel like personally, I would say I love this idea, but wish we did maybe six books instead of nine. Yeah. Because <laughs> nine was a lot. Yeah. That was a lot. Sun. It just, I know it made me look at my books a little bit differently. And it definitely made me pick, like the book, The House Girl that I read. I have literally had that on my shelves for ever forever and i have not touched mm -hmm. it and i don't know what, like i loved it it was really really great so i love this thank you emily i appreciate that perspective because <laughs> i did this and Lindsay knows this because we talk on the daily but like i was not doing great this month <laughs> no. oh monica the book is a, um a thousand white women i have that one too Oh, I like that one too. That one, I feel like I mentioned in a recent haul and a lot of people really loved or like said that, that I should read it. So. Yes, I really like that one. I read that a long time ago. So, so Amanda, you have, you have books that are getting you out of your reading slump. Lindsay, what's next on your docket? It's you. Um, I'm reading The Family Game. So it takes place, it's a suspense thriller, or whatever. It takes place between um, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I'm like, it's perfect. Yeah, um, so far, so good. I'm only like 78 pages in. And then I was getting a lot of buzz. Yeah. And that was all the currently reading podcast made me pick it up. They've made I, me pick up a lot of books too. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then I, I haven't gotten into Booker's podcast yet. You haven't? No. Oh. Gloria. Well, when you, when you decide you're ready, let me know, and I will hook you up with a whole list because I, my entire podcast. No. I need to try it, but the thing is, I just listen to so many audiobooks that I'm like, <laughs> I just have a Spotify rap today, and I'm like over here with my measly like 3,000 minutes of listening because all I listen to is audiobooks. <laughs> But I will yeah. try. I will try bookish podcast soon. And they're short; like it's not super long. I like it in between audiobooks. I'll yeah. listen to a few. Or if I'm in the mood where I'm like I can't focus on something. Yes. Because podcast, it doesn't matter if you listen. You don't like. You're not missing anything because a lot of it's just like really short segments. Um, and so, yeah, I love. And some bookish podcasts are just book reviews. Some are interviews with authors. Some are interviews with bookstore owners or like different bookish related topics, but not necessarily about books specifically. Like there's just, there's so many different ones out there that are so great. Yeah. So. I need to try it. It'll happen in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All right. Look, looks like many people liked the prompts a lot. Just maybe yeah, nine yeah, not as not many. Books. I like it. Yeah, I thought it was really unique. Like I said, it kind of made me look. And I mean, there is no historical. It was history. a challenge. Yeah, it was just a challenge. That's it. Like. Yep. Like, yeah, and I did not fill any of the challenges except for the first book. So there you go. In all the books that I read. I got halfway through my second book and the That's one other book that was on my TBR was, I didn't read it in order. And you know what guys, it's okay. I'll be the court jester. I don't have to be any of the titles we came up with. Nope. I'll just be the court jester and I'm okay with that. Yes. Uh, um, I know we were talking to, was it Sarah we were talking to and we were giving her a hard time that she was going to Historathon jail. Oh, yeah. She wasn't following the rules. She's the only one. No one else. No one else has to follow the rules. Only Sarah. <laughs> Although Sarah said she she quit Historathon this year. Yeah, so. She so did. She, she did quit it. She, she, that's why she went to jail. That's why she went to jail. It was great. I hope. Look, I'm looking forward to next year already. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys have ideas for prompts or group books or anything like that throughout the year, feel free to shoot any of us an uh, email 
and let us know and we'll add it to our Google Doc that we have going. And uh, we hope to see you guys all back here next year. Yeah. Sound good? We'll try yeah. to make a better book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It Maybe it'll be uh, 1,000 white women. That's Maybe. true. A lot of people still have it to read it. So maybe. Really good. No, I need to read that. So, all right. Thanks for joining us tonight, guys. Really appreciate it. And we will see you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone.